Hey everyone, thanks for coming to join me on this another segment of Chapters with Christian. Uh, the idea behind the Chapters with Christian is that I'm going to share one of the books with you from the, a series of books. And if you like that book, then you can come check out the rest of the books. Guess, guess where you can find them? It's right at your local library. And we do have this series of books that I'm sharing with you today. Uh, so today, we are going to share the first five chapters and then we will uh, share the second half of the book next week. And I'll also show you the other books that are in this series. So just like on a story time, if anyone's there and wants to say hi, you can say hi and I can uh, check in with you. Or if you have any questions. Now this is a little different than the... Um, this is a little different than when I'm sharing a picture book because even though the, this book does have pictures in it, it's a little tough to see them and as well as this is a chapter book so it's we focus mainly on the story but it does have illustrations that go along with it and if you do like the story and you'd like to read it again on your own uh, not next week but the week after that you can check it out for yourself so let's go ahead and share this story that's called the kingdom of Rinley this is book one called the lost stone by Jordan Quinn illustrated by Robert McPhillips Prince Lucas raced up the spiral stone staircase at the castle to the bedroom. He kneeled on the floor and then pulled a pile of clothes out from under his bed. There was a pair of worn trousers, a shabby shirt, a felt hat, scruffy leather, leather boots, and a wool cloak. Lucas had gotten the clothes from a handful, for a handful of coins from a boy in the village. Now the prince stood before a mirror and tried on the hat. This outfit will make me look like a normal eight-year-old boy, he thought. Nobody will ever know that I'm, I'm the Prince of Renly. And that was a problem. Lucas had grown bored of being a prince. Most kids think he must be crazy. Lucas had everything a boy or girl could wish for. A cozy goose-feathered bed. Toys fit for a prince. The best cooks in the land to make his meals. And a view of the sea from the top of his turret. Lucas even had his very own horse named Ivan, but there was one thing the prince did not have. Friends. Lucas wanted a friend more than anything in the world. He had a friend once, a pretty girl, green-eyed green girl named Clara Gills. Clara's mother, Anna, made dresses for Lucas's mother, Queen Tasha. Anna always brought Clara when she came to the castle. Clara, Clara and Lucas had played hide-and-seek and twirled on the swing in the royal playroom. But not anymore. Lucas's father, King Caleb, had forbidden it. He said, a proper prince does not play with village children. Lucas had cried until his nose got stuffy. So day after day, Lucas watched the children walk to and from school. Sometimes they stopped at the bakery for breadsticks. In the afternoon, Lucas watched the children climb trees and play tag in the meadow. How he longed to laugh and play along with them. And now, maybe I can have friends, he thought. Because I, Prince Lucas, have a magnificent plan. But Lucas had to hurry. It was time to go. He stuffed the worn clothes into a sack and then slung the sack over his shoulder. Next, he tied a thick rope to the windowsill, crawled onto the ledge, slid down the rope and ran to the stables where he saddled Ivan. Then Lucas checked to see if anyone was around. All clear, he thought. He hopped onto the Ivan, gave him a soft kick, and galloped away on his secret mission. Chapter 2 Lucas the Brave Lucas dashed over a bridge and down into the village. Chickens squawked and scattered to get out of his way. The villagers bowed and tipped their hats as he rode by. Clang, clang, the school bell rang down the lane. Lucas slapped the reins and he hurried toward the sound of the bell. And as he drew near, he leaped over a stone wall and came to rest. He hopped from the saddle and quickly changed his clothes. Lucas tucked his curly red hair inside the felt hat. Then he grabbed a handful of dirt and smudged his cheeks. He tied Ivan to a low tree branch and hung the sack with his princely clothes from the saddle. Well, Ivan, he said, here goes. Lucas climbed over the stone wall and stood in front of the schoolhouse. A swirl of smoke curled from the chimney. 
Today, Lucas took a deep breath. Today, I am Lucas the Brave, he said to himself. Then he marched up to the schoolhouse and slowly pulled open the door. Creak. The children sat in front of the teacher on benches. Everyone turned to stare at Lucas. A girl with a thin braid crowning her brown hair gasped and cupped her hand over her mouth. Good morning, boy, the teacher said. Are you here to join us? Yes, said Lucas. I'm new in town. Please have a seat, she said. I'm Mistress Carson. What's your name? My name is Flynn, fibbed the prince as he sat down on the bench at the back of the classroom. Welcome, Mistress Carson said. Class, please say good morning to Flynn. Good morning, Flynn, said the class. Now all eyes on me, said the teacher. We're going to work on subtraction. The children turned the teacher, turned toward the teacher, all except the girl with the braided crown. It was Clara, Lucas's old friend from the palace. She looked at the prince and raised an eyebrow. The prince winked at her. She smiled and quickly looked away. Nobody seemed to notice. Mistress Carson wrote some sums on a large slate on the front of the classroom. Now who would like to solve a problem at the board, she asked. The prince hand shot up. He loved to add and subtract. His father had taught him math at home. Mistress Carson called Lucas up to the board. The children watched as the new boy walked to the front of the class. I'm going to have lots of friends, Lucas thought. Then he began to work on one of the problems. The room was quiet, except for the chalk tapping on the board until... Someone began to pound on the doors of the school. The children jumped in their seats. Lucas froze. His heart began to thump. The teacher hurried to the back of the room and opened the door. Two burly men burst in. Lucas dropped his chalk on the floor. Oh no, he thought. The palace guards. He wanted to run, but the doors were blocked. There he is, shouted one of the guards as they pointed to Lucas. That's the Prince of Renly. Mistress Carson and the children gasped. The other guard ran toward the prince, grabbed him by the arm, and led him toward the doors. Clara waved to Lucas as Lucas walked by. Lucas hung his head. Now I'll never have any friends, he thought. Chapter 3, Kindness is King King Caleb threw Lucas' pheasant clothes into the fireplace. They burst into flames. What were you thinking, cried King Caleb. You are a royal prince. You must behave like one. Peasants are not equals to royals. But father, I have no friends, said Lucas. I'm bored out of my royal britches. You should spend some more time with my knights, suggested the king. You can train with them. It's not the same, said Lucas. I'm lonely, and I need friends my own age. I want somebody to talk to, and most of all, someone to go on adventures with me. The king sighed. He hated to see his son so unhappy, but he couldn't allow him to be friends with the peasants. Even they would think it was strange. He looked to Lucas's mother, Queen Tasha, for help. Your father is right, said the queen as she brushed her long red hair. But you are also right, Lucas. You do need a friend. She looked at her husband. Anna Gills is like family to me, said Queen Tasha, and her daughter Clara was like a sister to Lucas. Perhaps we should allow them to play together once in a while. King Caleb rubbed his blonde beard thoughtfully. He was mighty king, but he had a kind heart. All right then, Lucas, he said. I suppose you may be friends with Clara, but you're not to make friends with every peasant child in the kingdom of Renly. Prince Lucas ran to his father's arm. Thank you, father, he said. I promise. Chapter 4, Hear Ye, Hear Ye. Lucas couldn't wait for Clara and her mother to arrive at the palace, so he didn't. He snuck out and raced all the way to the bakery. Clara always went to the bakery after school. Her father, Owen Gills, worked there. Lucas peeked down the lane. The school children are coming, he thought. He didn't want them to see him, so he pressed against the wall alongside the bakery. Then he listened to what they were saying. Why on earth would the prince want to go to school with us, asked a boy named Alban. Maybe he's lonely, Clara said. I feel sorry for him, cooped up in the castle all day. The children laughed at Clara. How can you feel sorry for uh, the prince, asked a girl named Martha. The prince has everything, said another girl named Ashley. Not everything, said Clara. He doesn't have a single friend. 
He's not even allowed to play with me when I visit the palace with my mother. Well, I'd trade places with him any day, said Alban. I'd love to live like a prince. I know it sounds like a perfect life, said Clara, but a palace with fine clothes and delicious food aren't everything. Bells jingled as the children stepped into the bakery. Moments later, each child carried a roll of warm butternut bread to the bench outside. Lucas's mother watered. <clears throat> Lucas's mouth watered. How he wished he could join them. As he waited, he heard horses whinny. Then someone began to shout, Hear ye, hear ye, he cried. The Queen of Renly has lost her prized emerald stone. The king has offered a grand reward to anyone who finds it. The villagers began to hurry about to spread the news. Oh no, thought Lucas, I must get back to the palace. Lucas left his hiding place and ran all the way home, being careful to stay in the shadows. Chapter 5 A Royal Adventure Queen Tasha sat at her dressing table, dabbing her eyes with a silk handkerchief. Lucas put his hand on his mother's shoulder. He knew the emerald meant a lot to her. It had belonged to her great-grandmother. Don't cry, mother, he said. I'm going to find your emerald. His mother smiled weakly. Then she picked up the gold chain from her, which her stone no longer dangled. It could be anywhere, she said sadly. I've been all over the kingdom these past two days. Well, where have you traveled to? Lucas asked. The queen thought for a moment. I went to Primlock's, Birth, and Hobbsgrowth, she said. Lucas sighed. You're right. It could be anywhere, he said. But have no fear. I'm going to find it. I'll need help, though. What kind of help, said his mother. Clara's help, said Lucas. The queen smiled and nodded. All right, she said. You have my permission. Thank you, mother, said Lucas. I will find your emerald. Later that afternoon, Clara and her mother arrived at the palace. Lucas grabbed Clara by the hand, and they raced to the royal playroom. Then he told her his idea. We'd search for the missing jewel together, Clara asked. Exactly, replied Lucas. But will your parents allow it, asked Clara with a frown. They already have after what happened at what happened today, said Lucas. What do you mean, Clara asked. After I got caught at the schoolhouse, my parents agreed to let us be friends again. You mean you didn't get into trouble, questioned Clara. No, said Lucas. I think they felt sorry for me. Why? Because I have no friends, Lucas said. Clara sat on the swing and looked at Lucas. Is it hard being a prince, asked Clara. No, it's D-U-L-L -L being a prince, said Lucas. And lonely. I can't even be friends with ordinary children. That royalty stinks, said Clara. Lucas laughed. Well, at least we could be friends, he said. That's great news, Clara said. So when do we start our search? Right now, said Lucas, and our first ep adventure will be epic. I love epic adventures, said Clara. Then let's make a plan, said Lucas. Lucas laid out a map of the great kingdom. Then they marked all the places Queen Tasha had been over the past two days. Clara knew that the kingdom of Renly well. She had delivered bread to all the lands with her father. I'll be your guide, Clara said. I can hardly wait, said Lucas. How about we meet outside the carriage house after breakfast? There's no school tomorrow, said, so I'll be there, said Clara. Can I ask for a small favor, said Lucas? Sure, Clara said. Will you bring some butternut bread from the bakery? Clara laughed. Only if you bring me some yummy sausage from the royal pantry, she said. Deal, said Lucas. And that's where we're going to stop today. That was the first five chapters in this book called The Kingdom of Renly. Next week we will share the final chapters from this story of The Kingdom of Renly, as well as I will show you the books that come after this. If you like these characters and you like this story, uh, or even if you would like to check out this book, like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of hard for me to show you the pictures, but maybe you can see that there. That's our prince. And there's the prince and his mom and dad. And and there's Clara and the prince. 
So join me next week, and we'll finish sharing the stories with Chapters with Christian. Uh, make sure you give us a little like or uh, so we know that you're watching and viewing with us there, please. And so thank you so much, and I'll see you next week with the final conclusion of The Kingdom of Friendly.